Room for One. Item number, SCP-1197. Object Class, Euclid. Special Containment Procedures. SCP-1197 is to be fitted with a Foundation Issue Keycard Lock, designated to match neighboring units. Management has been instructed to inform both staff and guests that SCP-1197 is indefinitely inaccessible. Two armed personnel are to be incorporated into the civilian staff in the security office. Any subjects emerging from SCP-1197 are to be detained and administered medical and psychological treatment before being interviewed. Following an active session, SCP-1197 is to be thoroughly searched and cleaned, with the entrance door secured open. Any anomalous items and bodies are to be removed and studied. SCP-1197-1 is not to be manipulated at any time outside of testing. Description: SCP-1197 is Hotel Suite blank in Redacted, containing a bedroom area, bathroom, and typical furnishings including a television, mini-fridge, and telephone. The windows on the far wall of the bedroom cannot be opened, and the walls, floor, and ceiling cannot be damaged or breached by any known means. When viewed from through the windows from outside, SCP-1197 appears as a clean and unoccupied room at all times. SCP-1197 can be occupied for any amount of time and freely vacated, provided the occupant does not open SCP-1197-1. SCP-1197-1 is a doorway in the western wall of SCP-1197. Although it appears to connect to the adjacent suite, the corresponding door in room blank cannot be opened. SCP-1197-1 remains locked unless the entrance door to SCP-1197 is closed, at which point SCP-1197-1 can be opened. Opening SCP-1197-1 will reveal an identical version of SCP-1197, including any current occupants who have opened their version of SCP-1197-1 at the same moment. New instances of subjects exhibit accurate knowledge in response to questions of identity and act in a similar manner. Posthumous testing reveals no biological discrepancies. SCP-1197 has demonstrated the ability to spawn items during an active session, out of view of any occupants. Utilities, with the exception of the telephone, continue to function, but occasionally experience outages. During an active session, the entrance door to SCP-1197 will no longer open and cannot be breached from either side. Should one instance of each occupant expire, SCP-1197-1 will close, and the entrance door will open for whichever room is currently occupied. To date, all recorded deaths within SCP-1197 have resulted from homicide. Addendum Note, the Foundation became aware of SCP-1197 four days into Incident 1197-3. Interviews with hotel staff and local authorities provided information regarding previous incidents. For clarification purposes, surviving subjects are designated Dash 1, Dash 2, etc., while their duplicates are designated Dash A, Dash B, respectively. Show Incident Logs Subject Blank Duration Approximately 16 hours Subject 1 failed to check out of SCP-1197 Hotel staff could not open door, authorities notified. Before police arrived, subject exited SCP-1197 appearing distressed and acting violently towards anyone approaching him. A battered body similar in appearance to the subject was discovered in SCP-1197. Subject arrested and interrogated before committing suicide in police custody. Interrogation logs provided rough details of an SCP-1197 active session, during which the Subject-1 accused Subject A of lying about his identity, denied the reality of the situation, and attempted to escape. Eventually, the Subject-1 subdued and tortured Subject A to gain additional information and slash or freedom. Subject A expired from inflicted injuries, at which point SCP-1197-1 closed and the entrance door opened. Posthumous DNA testing revealed a match between the Subject-1 and Subject A. Subject. Blank. Duration. Unknown. A body matching Subject-1 was found in SCP-1197 by cleaning staff at approximately 12.15pm the day after Subject-1 checked in. A police investigation determined the cause of death to be asphyxiation using a leather belt matching the one worn by Subject-A. Time of death estimated at 9.30am. 
hotel security video and front desk logs show Subject 1 exiting room and checking out at 9.37 a.m. Subject 1's current location, unknown. Subject, blank, and blank. Duration, approximately 45 days. Before the Foundation could secure the site, Subject 1, male, and Subject 2, female, activated SCP-1197. On-site personnel responded to the reopening of SCP-1197 to discover Subject 1 assaulting Subject 2. Subject 1 detained. Subject 2 transported to nearest hospital, under guard. Interview reveals subjects to be a married couple. Subject 1 opened SCP-1197-1 while unpacking, discovering Subject A and Subject B. After a few hours of panic and argument, Subject 2 and Subject B were able to calm their husbands, and all four agreed to rest and await rescue. Subject B discovered wrapped sandwiches in their mini-fridge, which hadn't been there previously, sharing them amongst all four subjects. The fridge replenished every day at first, but gradually produced food less and less frequently. Over the following weeks, tension grew between the couples, until they decided to keep SCP-1197-1 closed and check in daily. Eventually, Subject A claimed the fridge ceased producing food, resulting in a violent altercation, after which SCP-1197-1 was closed and barricaded from both sides. Several days later, Subject 1 awoke to find Subject 2 missing. Forcing SCP-1197-1 open, Subject 2 discovered Subject A in bed with Subject 2 and Subject B. All three claimed innocence to accusations of infidelity. Subject 1 assaulted Subject A, leading to the death of Subject A and Subject B. SCP-1197-1 closed, and entrance door opened. Two bodies were recovered for study. Subject 2 expired from injuries before being interviewed. Subject D-1916, a 20-year-old male convicted of a gang-related homicide. Duration, approximately 9 days. D-1916 instructed to enter SCP-1197, wait until the entrance door was closed, and open SCP-1197-1. D-1916 equipped with audio and video recording devices. Remote feeds were lost when SCP-1197-1 was opened. Upon exiting SCP-1197, D-1916-1 attempted to escape the hotel before being detained. D-1916-1 described meeting D-1916-A and exchanging questions until both accepted their situation. D-1916-1 and D-1916-A attempted escape, but were unable to breach doors and windows, or contact anyone via telephone. Over the next week, increasingly elaborate plans were enacted, but all met with failure, as various utilities such as power, water, and air conditioning began failing for long periods. Arguing intensified, until D-1916-1 discovered an electric iron in the closet, and bludgeoned D-1916-A to death. SCP-1197-1 closed, and the entrance door opened. Body, iron, and two recording devices recovered for study. Recovered recordings show a clean, quiet, and unoccupied room matching that seen through the windows. The videos follow the movement of each subject, but even when pointed at each other or at mirrors, do not show the subjects or recording devices. Subject, D-985, a 24-year-old male convicted of three related homicides. Duration, 5 minutes. D-985 armed with a loaded pistol and fully informed about the nature of SCP-1197. D-985 instructed to enter SCP-1197. Wait until the entrance door was closed and open SCP-1197-1. Entrance door opened minutes later, revealing D-985-1 leaning against armchair with a gunshot wound in the side, facing a closed SCP-1197-1. D-985-1 ordered by armed personnel to drop pistol and lay face down. D-985-1 complied. D-985-1 described opening SCP-1197-1 and being shot before returning fire and presumably terminating D-985-A. Personnel report not hearing any gunshots or other noises from SCP-1197 until entrance door reopened. D-985-1 escorted from SCP-1197 and treated by medical personnel. Subject, D-5482, a 40-year-old female convicted of a domestic homicide. Duration, 38 hours. D-5482 instructed to enter SCP-1197, wait until the entrance door was closed, 
and fully explore the room. After 38 hours, entrance door opened, but D5482-1 did not exit. Security personnel entered SCP-1197 and discovered D5482-1 sitting on the bed, cradling D5482-A, who had expired from a gunshot wound to the temple. A single pistol was found on the floor, which had not been issued to the subject. D5482-1, body, and pistol removed from SCP-1197. D5482-1 was calm and refused to describe her experience, explaining only that she had dealt with her issues. Subject, Dr. Harrison. Duration, ongoing. 96 days as of most recent project report. Following extensive psychological examination, head researcher Dr. Harrison was cleared to activate SCP-1197 for direct study. Subject provided with a standard survival pack, 30 days of rations, and one week's worth of emergency drinking water. Various additional supplies approved, including clothing, books, writing materials, and board games.